Hi. Bonjour. I'm Heston, Heston Rubenthal, for Waitrose Channel. I'm in my house in uh, Provence, and after thousands and thousands of hours devoting myself to my relationship with food and cooking, realising so much about myself and my relationship with food, which every human being has. How do you put it into a recipe? Oh, it's a little bit more complicated. So what I'm going to show you now is a recipe for tart de one of the great pastry dishes. It's going to help me maybe not make so many mistakes. We've been working together for 10 to 15 years. It's funny because actually his name is Edward Cook. He's Ed Cook and he's the Ed Chef of the Fat Duck. So there's two sides to this recipe, only recipe. There is the linear, so you measure the weight, how many people, how much time and temperature, and that's really important, that's human doing. The human being is thinking, oh, that smells a bit burnt to me. Oh. It's the connection with what we do, and both those sides, the being and the doing, are so important. I'm trying to explain to you guys how I react to the smells, to the sounds, and my gut feeling, all of these things that I've learned so this tartar tan, four ingredients, wonderful, for the recipe, simple, bosh. So butter, it's local salted butter. There's some unrefined sugar. So we'll put, if we put the apples in the pan. The sugar in the pan will have a different density from the sugar that's in the apple, so it will pull the moisture out, and it's that, this is a really key part for this recipe. As that water comes out of the apples, it will mix with the butter and sugar and start to caramelise. And so this is one of the really key things. You know, I can put, I left this here, star anise, put rosemary, you can do all sorts of things. But for me, the real magic happens here. You listen to the crackle and the bubbling, and how much water is coming out of the apples. What we're talking about here is actually ref is, is responding to what we can smell and hear and feel and stuff like that. Yeah, you can still smell it's quite buttery, quite sweet smell. So we're looking for a bit more savoury, caramelised essence. Well, there's a bit of caramelisation here. So I think, okay, we've got to be careful about that because I don't want that to burn. So what I might do here is just flip the apples around. Do you hear the noise of the crack? When that, when that um, crackle goes like that, the water's coming out of the butter in the apples. When you can't hear any noise anymore, yeah. it might burn. For me, this is really one of the most wonderful things about cooking. The adaptation, predicting, oh, this is happening now, I think I should do this. So I'm just putting a lid that's too big for the pan. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to generate just a bit more moisture from the apples. So that moisture will come out of the apples and then emulsify the sugar and the, and the, and the butter. It's certainly quite professional, isn't it? <laughs> Sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, please. This basic principle will work with pineapples, apples, pears, quinces. You can just carry on with it. So you can do it with all, sort, all sorts of fruit. I mean, you know, veg, but all, all sorts of fruit. Uh, then you can put, I've got some star anise here. There's some lavender out there. There's rosemary, there is some there's an olive tree, you, there's a, in the fridge there might be something else. You can put all this stuff in, you can put vanilla in. But for me now, every time an ingredient is added, it is an opportunity for distraction. What we're talking about here is actually telling you something that is really, on the surface of it, really simple into something interactive. But we live in a world so full of distraction. How on earth are we supposed to look at this stuff when we're always distracted with other things? We've got 
White Joe's or Butter Puff Pastry. Let's put uh, two sheets. When you put the pastry on, if you put it about that much bigger in uh, diameter or circumference in the pan, you turn the pastry in on itself under the apples. That also keeps the moisture in and the pastry will get um, caramelised. Then, use a spoon, tuck it under the apples. So then it's in the butter, it's in the sugar. So I'm, some holes in the pastry just to let some of the steam out. That smells nice actually. We've done all right. She's doing this, as, doing this as a job. <laughs> so now that's enough, I'm gonna we'll put this in the oven. Okay, so, yeah. Now, hope for the best. Hope for the best. It smells great. But, um, For me, before the look is a smell, it doesn't smell like anything's burnt. Now, whether I can turn it out by the pan is another thing. This is now crispy and moving around, so this should be in theory. Here you go. <laughs> With that. It's not too bad, is it? It's lovely, yeah. Try it as you go from here and then move down. See how the frequency and the bubbles and everything changes and the crackle. And then you get the smell. Crazy. It's amazing. This is the same as when I did with the, with the triple cooked chips or roast potatoes. There's that bit with the potatoes in the water and you cook them. You don't know how long they're going to take. So if the recipe says cook it for 30 minutes, it, it's almost like a security mechanism, which is really important. But the self-discovery is so magical. It's by taking that caramel that bit further, you get that really rich colour. Yeah. But also that it's not going to be super sweet dessert. It's actually going to be quite savoury. Yeah. Right. Let's see what this tastes like outside. Local creme fraiche. Could pick some lavender as well. 